In the spring of 1764, a young woman in the picturesque region of Gévaudan, France, reported a harrowing encounter. While herding cattle, she claimed that a terrifying beast had lurched out of the woods and charged straight at her. Fortunately, she escaped with her life because the bulls in her herd had scared the creature off. When she later reported the encounter, the young woman described the strange beast as like a wolf, yet not a wolf. Two months later, the mysterious creature returned, but this time it could not be scared away and killed a young girl tending her flock. Over the next several months, the so-called Bête de Gévaudan, or Beast of Gévaudan, struck again and again. Women and young children were dragged into the woods, only to be found half-eaten or with their throats ripped out. The horrified locals tried hunting down the mysterious beast, but with no success. For the next three years, the creature terrorized the people of Gévaudan, taking victim after victim, eventually killing as many as 300. The lucky few who survived their encounters with the beast described it as much larger than a wolf, with reddish-brown fur and a long, strong tail. They also said it had talons for claws, could walk on its hind legs, and had skin that could withstand bullets. Soon, conditions in Gévaudan grew so dire that hunters came from across France to try and track the beast down. The French king even got involved, sending his personal bodyguard to Gévaudan to slay the beast and put an end to its reign of terror. But although something was killed in the summer of 1767, something that allegedly had human remains in its stomach and was presumed to be the creature, the mystery of the beast of Gévaudan persists to this day. You're listening to History Uncovered, brought to you by the digital publisher All That's Interesting, where we explore the uncharted corners of the natural world and the world past. I'm All That's Interesting staff writer Kalina Fraga. Today, we're going back to 18th century France, when a terrifying and mysterious beast stalked the countryside of Gévaudan. After the young woman in Gévaudan reported narrowly escaping the strange beast after her bulls scared it off, a 14-year-old named Jeanne Boulet took her family's livestock out to pasture in the rolling fields of Gévaudan. At the time, this bucolic region in the south of France was an idyllic place to live. Mountainous and cut off from most of the country, it offered its inhabitants a peaceful and slow-paced existence. But everything changed on that late June afternoon. It was then that something attacked and killed Boulet while she was attending her flock. For the villagers, Boulet's death was certainly a cause for concern, but not outright panic, at least not at first. After all, herding animals could be dangerous business. Herders were often alone, and packs of sheep or cows frequently attracted predators. But then, not long afterward, another young girl in Javudan was attacked while tending her flock, in her dying breath, she described the thing that had killed her as a horrible beast. From there, attacks started happening with alarming frequency. A young boy disappeared in August, only to be found later partially eaten. Between September 1st and September 26th, four more people were attacked and killed. One woman, the first adult victim, was found just feet away from her home. The people of Gévaudan knew there was a monster in their midst, and they would have to hunt down this vicious beast and slay it. <laughs> Following the rash of harrowing attacks, the captain of the local infantry, Jean-Baptiste Dumel, and a regional government delegate, Etienne Lafont, prepared a massive response. They were joined by some 30,000 volunteers from across the region with one goal, to hunt, shoot, and kill the beast. Confident that they would quickly subdue the creature, the men scoured the countryside in search of the beast of Gévaudan. They lay trapped with poison bait, had some volunteers dressed like women in hopes of attracting the beast, and even used the dead bodies of the very victims that the beast had killed to try and lure the animal out of the woods. The men were highly motivated. 
Of course, they wanted to kill the beast and stop the killings, but they also knew that killing the monster came with a reward equal to a year's salary. However, despite all their best efforts, nothing worked. Whenever the hunters did manage to draw out the beast, they were unable to kill it. As a French paper noted in 1764, quote, Hunters who are in pursuit have neither been able to stop it because it is more agile than they, nor lure it into their traps because it surpasses them in cunning, nor engage in combat when it presents itself to them because its terrifying appearance weakens their courage, disturbs their vision, sets their hands shaking, and neutralizes their skill, unquote. In fleeting glimpses of the beast, the hunters also confirmed that they had something much worse and more fearsome than a wolf on their hands. Lafont described the beast by saying, quote, It is much bigger than a wolf. It has a snout somewhat like a calf's and very long hair, which would seem to indicate a hyena. Unquote. Dumel described the beast of Gévaudan in more colorful terms. The creature, he said, had the chest of a horse, the body of a leopard, and red fur with a black stripe. He mused that the beast was some kind of hybrid, maybe of a lion and something else. Another witness said the beast had supernatural abilities, claiming it could walk on its hind legs and even repel bullets. Meanwhile, with hunters roaming the countryside looking for the beast, villagers were often left to fend for themselves. In January 1765, a group of children led by 10-year-old Jacques Portefe managed to scare off the beast by wielding sticks. And when the beast tried to attack a young woman named Marie-Jeanne Vallée that August, she pierced it with a bayonet, saving her own life, although the creature escaped. Two professional wolf hunters, a father-son pair named Denervelle, even traveled from far off Normandy to help kill the beast. Claiming to have killed more than a thousand wolves, they eagerly joined the hunt, but also failed to kill the monster. Finally, prompted by stories of the villagers' bravery yet lack of success, in the face of this fearsome creature, the King of France, Louis Cannes XV, set his personal bodyguard Francois Antoine de Gévaudan to kill the beast for good. At 71 years old and with a long career as one of the king's personal hunters behind him, Francois Antoine knew a thing or two about killing fearsome creatures. In September 1765, he gathered 40 hunters from around Gévaudan and a dozen hounds and headed to the countryside. Soon, they came across the beast. One of the men in the hunting party described what happened next, saying, quote, Antoine fired, hitting the creature in the right shoulder. The other hunters opened fire, one shot going right through the beast's right eye and its skull. The creature fell to the ground, dead, as the men rejoiced, unquote. But the beast wasn't dead. Not yet. As the hunter recounted, quote, Suddenly, the beast rose to its feet and charged Antoine. The hunters fired a volley, hitting the beast again. It turned around and tried to escape before collapsing again, dead at last, unquote. It seemed, finally, that the beast of Gévaudan had been slain. It appeared to be a wolf, a huge wolf. The creature killed by Antoine weighed 130 pounds, was 5 feet and 7 inches long, and stood more than 2 feet tall. The king's bodyguard triumphantly declared, quote, We declare by the present report signed from our hand, we never saw a big wolf that could be compared to this one. Hence, we believe this could be the fearsome beast that caused so much damage, unquote. Antoine also managed to hunt down and slay a she-wolf and her pups nearby. He returned to Paris a hero, the man who had killed the beast of Gévaudan and saved the day. But two months later, in December, the beast attacked again, going after two young brothers who barely escaped with their lives. The king, still believing the matter settled, offered little aid. And so the beast tore through Gévaudan once more, killing scores of people. Many reported that it seemed even more fierce and even more fearless than it had before. In June 1767, almost exactly three years after the beast's first fatal attack in Gévaudan, a local hunter named Jean Chastel went out looking for the beast. Chastel, whom the king's bodyguard had once thrown in jail for accidentally leading him into a bog, took his gun and his Bible into the mountains. Chastel had a plan. 
he'd allegedly filled the gun with silver bullets, which he'd obtained by melting down a religious amulet. Alone in the wilderness, he sat, opened his Bible, and waited for the beast to approach. When a giant wolf came racing out of the woods, Justel was ready. He leapt to his feet, aimed his gun, and fired. That day, June 19th, he seemed to manage to do what no one else had, and finally kill the beast of Gévaudan. Allegedly, a later examination of the beast revealed that the creature had human remains in its stomach. Thus, the people of Gévaudan were convinced that Chastel had killed the right animal. When the killing seemed to cease, people across the region relaxed. Their three-year nightmares seemed to have finally come to an end. Some, however, believed that evil still lurked in the darkness, that Chastel had merely killed a wolf like Antoine. Thus, as life began to return to normal, the mystery of the beast endured. Was the terrible creature truly a wolf, or something else entirely? Today, no one is exactly sure what stalked the hills of Gévaudan in the 1760s, but some theories have emerged in the past few centuries. First of all, it's possible that the people of Gévaudan were terrorized by an aggressive wolf. That's what the first witness described, a wolf-like creature. And indeed, there are thousands of wolf attacks on record in France between the 17th and 19th centuries. Historians have even suggested that a series of wolf attacks could have become fantastical because of the atmosphere in France at the time. The country had just lost the Seven Years' War, so a terrifying, unexplainable creature offered both a chance at redemption and a sign of God's displeasure. But that first witness specifically said that what she saw was like a wolf, but not a wolf. So if not a wolf, then what was the beast of Gévaudan? One theory suggests that it was actually an escaped exotic animal, like a hyena or a lion. Perhaps the creature had been in someone's private collection and managed to flee into the countryside. Certainly, most people in France would have never seen a lion or a hyena in real life, so it would appear like a monster to them. And Dumel even suggested that what he saw seemed lion-like. Other theories are more outlandish. One suggests that the beast of Gévaudan was a werewolf, which is why Chastel's silver bullets were finally able to kill it. Another speculates that the beast was actually some kind of prehistoric predator thought to be extinct, but in fact alive and well in the French wilderness. Perhaps the most terrifying theory, however, claims that the beast of Gévaudan was not an animal at all, but a human being. This theory postulates that a serial killer, possibly one wearing furs, was responsible for the hundreds of deaths that occurred in Gévaudan over three years. After all, many of the victims were found decapitated. Could an animal do that? In the end, the body of the beast killed by Chastel was either destroyed or sent to a museum where it was lost. Thus, we'll likely never know for sure what stalked the hills of Gévaudan. Thanks for listening to History Uncovered. I'm History Uncovered's producer, Kit Westneat. If you like the show, help others find us by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And be sure to follow the All That's Interesting and History Revealed pages on Facebook and Real History Uncovered on Instagram. Make sure you don't miss out on the new episodes and subscribe to the History Uncovered podcast. And keep up with our latest stories at allthatsinteresting.com. If you have a question about the show or just want to say hi, feel free to call us at 929-526-3029 or email us at podcast at allthisinteresting.com. This podcast is part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. Visit airwavemedia.com to listen and subscribe to their other fine shows like Legends of the Old West and Redacted History. Until next time, keep exploring.